The question, what is knowledge, is one that has been tossed around by philosophers for millennia. It's one of the big questions of philosophy. There is so much that we can do with the knowledge that, you know, humans have collectively learned. And, you know, through through medical science, we are able to save lives. And um, other scientific knowledge has brought us to the moon and has allowed us to discover new species on this planet. I think it's really a thing that separates us from um, other animals. We can live in a way that isn't just survival and isn't just instinct. We can continually learn and have richer lives for a long time and in many cultures and many cultures still, uh, an oral tradition is very important. And that's a beautiful and important skill that a lot of us have lost. Published works and the written word and allows us to share more broadly and it gives voice to those who have um, passed on. And I can read Plato or any of the, the great religious texts of the world and, and hear from people that have been gone for decades or, or centuries. Britannica has been around for a long time, more than 250 years. And in that time, we've, you know, had a few iterations on how we try to classify and organize um, the information that's fitting for an encyclopedia. Behind me, I have the original encyclopedia and uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. And you can see that the first volume is A and B. And uh, I think they felt that that was a bit ambitious because the other two um, include all the rest of the, the letters. But now as a digital publication, we have much more space and that has allowed us to expand our articles and add, you know, potentially infinite other new articles. So within that framework is how we curate uh, the entries in our encyclopedia and try to bring, you know, forth the big pieces of, of human knowledge that uh, we have uh, collected and um, maintained in, in our long history. In the 70s, we sent out these two spacecraft called the Voyagers, and they were going out towards Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune, and then just continuing on into interstellar space. And on both of those spacecraft, we put um, what's called the golden records, and they're literal, you know, old fashioned records. And it's just like a very touching compilation of what represents humanity and what represents Earth um, to somebody that might encounter it out in space. And back on Earth, we've used um, really uh, expansive networks of radio telescopes, and they point them at places in space where there might be a planet that could host life. There's like two big categories of extraterrestrials. One is just extraterrestrial life, and that could be just some cells out there, or maybe something like a plant. That type of life we're not going to probably communicate with uh, as communication very much. We might find them someday. Uh, but the second and more fun to, to dream about are, uh, you know, extraterrestrials with intelligence that might have um, culture and civilization and maybe technology. I think that if we heard something from extraterrestrials now that communication would be really slow because it's possible they sent that message hundreds of years ago and it's just been coming light speed to us and then we would send one and a couple hundred years would go before they receive it unless they have some technology that we don't have which is also possible we should send the encyclopedia britannica to to them of that shows so much of humanity and it shows so much of our planet of here's our science, here's what we know about space and about geology, here's what our atmosphere is like and our plants and animals and you know it's a pretty thorough representation of, of us and, and life on this planet as far as a single written work could be. So yeah I think that that, that would be a decent publication to, to get into the hands of if they have hands of extraterrestrials out there.